This weapon's all right, but I kind of just have a hard time using it because when I need to shoot somebody, I have a crossbow. Um, yeah, when I need to shoot someone, I have a crossbow. And when I when I have ample ceiling space, hard climb. This one's really good. I just played this one in OMD two, and by just I mean like three months ago. Yeah, it's February now. Let's look around some more. Oh, yeah, this one sucks. I hate having more than one rift. Plus, this thing, this little mess here, kind of makes it difficult to just... This makes it kind of difficult, yeah. So, what I think you can do is... And then they, yeah, and then they turn around and come this way. And then you block these off. I don't think they can walk through here. Actually, I think they can. Hmm. Yeah, so you essentially like, oh no, I stopped, and then, like, they stop here, and then they come over here, and then maybe they stop here and go through, I think that might be fun. Ah, yes, the Orcs Must Die theme. I don't actually know the names of these songs, but, like, I love the genre, at least. Okay, it looks like they're reaching the barricade and turning around. Which is good, that's what we want. Yeah, really wide levels like this get really hard. Sorry, I'm focusing in hardcore. I actually have something to say, I'm not just blanking, but... I've kind of been in a mood to play, like, more traditional, like, traditionalist magic things. Because I, I love playing as a warrior, and I actually love playing as a, um, a battle mage, or what have you. Let's put it here. And then, and then we'll barricade off this a little bit, and force them to walk over there some more. Yeah, I remember, because ah, the stairs make it really weird and difficult to barricade them up here. Um, yeah, I've kind of been wanting to play a game with, like, traditionalist magical stuff, like, where you have robes and a wand and stuff. And, like, I am aware that that Harry Potter game is coming out in, like, three days or so. But I am still kind of ideologically opposed to um, buying it. I might end up buying it or get it on sale. I don't really want to pirate it because it'll be really annoying. And also, like, you know, illegal. Because I, I, I don't myself fully know how to pirate stuff. I know that I'm, like, somebody who lives in the year 2023. But I'm kind of staggeringly technologically inept. Which is weird, because I run a channel where I play things that require technology. It's not like I'm doing one of those channels where I, like, make stuff out of mud and dirt and things. Like, then, uh, uh, my lack of technological advantageousness would be a, uh, a boon, dare I say. Alright. Yeah, we'll slow them down there. 
because we can establish some some more arches up here just to be a speaking of archers it's time for you guys to earn your keep but yeah one thing about piracy is that like th this is this is something i really like this is a gabe newell quote so nobody get mad uh, but he, he said that piracy is rarely a money issue and it's more often a service issue because a lot of people only pirate games to um, Just to try them out like Most of the people pirating games are in many cases people who would have bought it anyway, but We have lost the the brave and powerful art of the video game demo and like as demos are getting as games are getting bigger and bigger like a demo is going to get huger and huger let's put another uh archer up here um yeah as games get bigger and bigger de demos get like more and more difficult to uh like do properly and plus, you have, like, data miners and stuff where, like, the second a demo comes up, everyone's just going to rip through it and see everything that could be in the game. Like, there was that thing with the Bloodborne demo where, like, just because they had coded the game incorrectly, not because of, like, any data mining or anything, you could just glitch out of the level that you're supposed to be in and then go play the game. And, like, a staggeringly large amount of game was actually accessible... Well, that's interesting. Their corpses don't appear to blow these barrels up, even though it is an explosion. Yeah, he's being slowed. Okay. Nobody's reached this yet, but that's alright. Let's slow more on, on this side, just so that this side has to take longer to catch up to the other side. Because that side has to go there, and then it has to come through here, and then they'll be it here. So if we group them together, then things like our, our fire blast will hit them more. Uh, yeah, a lot of people who pirate stuff don't pirate it because they, like, want to steal. They just want to try it out, and, like, that's kind of just unfeasible. Not because it's unfeasible, just because companies don't put in the effort. Like, I think about, like, some of my favorite games of all time started as demos to me. Like, I played the Bastion demo, and I was like, yeah, that could be one of the greatest games ever made, and it was. I have LP'd Bastion, but it's a pretty uh, atypical LP for me because I keep my mouth shut during it. Just because, like, Bastion literally already has a narrator. It was a selling point of the game. And the narrator's great. He's a professional narrator. I'm not getting paid for this. I actually recently hit 300 subscribers a bit ago. I'm very proud of myself for that, but, you know... I kind of don't want to be talking over the Bastion narrator. I wanted to have a pure playthrough of Bastion. Um, so I did. But yeah, Metal Gear Solid 3 for the 3DS had a, a demo. And that was actually the first way that I played it, believe it or not. Why don't we just instead bunch our guys up some more? Uh, we'll fix that. But currently we're doing okay when it comes to... Okay, the oil is working. The slick traps are working. Oh, shoot. Hi, welcome to a kid-friendly outfit from the dusk. Get out of there. That's alright, we need more archers anyway. Our archer stocks have been replenished. Right. Because the archers are dead, nobody's stopping these guys. Rookie mistake. Were you it? Were you the last line of defense?
Alright. Step right this way, Mr. Rourke. You'll never see this gun. <laughs> Alright, missing some spaces in here, but that should be okay. Because I'll get run around here. Is this right? Eh. Eh. Yeah, I think this is right. Um, yeah, I love I love the quote that like piracy is a, ser uh, a service issue because like people are legitimately pirating less things just because Steam is so easy to use. And, like, sometimes you, like, literally have to pirate something because they don't sell it anymore legally. Like, um, I don't, I don't think it's possible to play the game titled Dune 1 anymore legally. I think you need to use an emulator. Um, there's a couple of games like that. Like, uh, I, I am lucky to have a disc of Bionicle Heroes for the PC. But even that is kind of not working as well as I would like. All right, you guys focus on the fire babies. Or what are these called? Fire bats? Hell bats? I think they're hell bats. Any of them get through? One got through. Well, they stopped most of them, so that's cool. Why don't we just sprinkle a few more right there? Yeah, there's a lot of people who, like, now don't bother pirating things just because it's so easy. And there are some games where, like, it's really hard to get a hold of them, but for that, you have good old games. And, you know, that's why putting the effort in to ensure that good old games will continue to work, really, guys, is so important. And it's so useful, too. I actually, um... <laughs> when I was first getting back into PC gaming, I, uh... I didn't have my old PC. I didn't have my old Steam library. I wanted to uh, see if I could, like, be a PC gamer and Let's Play and stuff without using Steam at all. But, like, Good Old Games just does not have the library to support it. And I definitely think that Steam might have a, a monopoly on things. But I digress. I'm really not interested in pirating most things. I just don't enjoy doing it. Um, which means that if I don't want to buy something, I kind of just won't play it. But there's a great deal of reasons that I don't want to get the new Hogwarts game, the new Harry Potter game. Like, even besides the, um, the fact of J.K. Rowling's, like, limited involvement. Like, I... Y'all, I do not like her. I know that that's not exactly a controversial thing to say. You'd like to think so, at least. Um... And I know that she's, like, not involved that, you know, strongly, but still. Um... Sorry, I promise I did have something to say. I'm just focusing on shooting these guys. Uh, and the other thing is that, like, I really... I'm not supportive of a lot of, like, AAA game development now. With, like, it's $70. Will it work? You'll find out. Like, again, that's something that we used to get with demos. But, like, one reason that indie gaming is so, like... Fun, good, solid... Is because with indie development, you know, it's likely something where you can observe the game all the way through its development cycle. And you can see if it'll be good years in advance. But a lot of, like, AAA companies are able to see that, like... Okay, someone will buy a new Battlefield just because it has Battlefield in the title. There's no other check that goes into their heads before they even think about slapping $60 down. And now that's going up to $70 just because of, like, corporate greed and inflation and stuff. We might be able to... Oh, 
Okay, yeah. That's a little better. Clean living, all right. Um, yeah, and, like, obviously that's a problem for people who buy FIFA, and, like, I feel like I need to have, I feel like people who buy FIFA need to be, like, sought out and, and helped individually. You know, we must seek aid for the people who are still buying new FIFAs. That is how we can begin to heal. You know, if, if big money makers like that are... Ha! That's, that's pretty good. Little Looney Tunes, but that's alright. We all need some Looney Tunes. Oh, that ain't good. Run, Maximilian! Word. Hey, you'll, you'll never actually know if something's good. Which is, like, supremely annoying. I think there's an ability to heal your guys in this game, and that's really annoying. Because I know that they add it later. And it's a useful ability. But I don't know if it's an option here. Kind of annoying. Uh, I digress. Anyway, yeah, like, not to, not to play to, you know, recent trends here. I know that this is an LP channel where I play only the most striking while the iron is ice cold style of games. You know, things that weren't cool even 10 years ago when they came out. Look, I kid. I love Orcs Must Die, but, like, this is not a particularly popular game. That's why they were able to buy up the rights to this game so they could put it on Stadia. Make it a Stadia exclusive. We need to kill more better. Good. Yeah, we should be doing that. What am I doing? We'll put those here. Come step on these big traps, guys. You love them. So how far does that fling you? Oh, it flings them over. Th ah. ah, that could be better. This trap makes it easier for the orcs. What? Why did I put that in there? Why is that a trap? All right, my guys are really starting to drop like flies here, so let's fill that out some more. But yeah, again, not to play the recent trends. I know that I'm all about older stuff. But that Forspoken, huh? Like, nobody checked to make sure that it could run on anything. Like, it has decent combo potential, but like... There's a great deal of more work that could have gone into it to make it, like, really good. We are now past Devil May Cry 5. Like, that is now the gigantic, like, anchor in the water. Oh, so sometimes it'll fling them the correct distance. Yeah, we are now post DMC 5, and, like... You know, we will know if something is good by comparing it to DMC 5. And then compare to Hi-Fi Rush, that a game that got, like, no advertisement, but then it was, like, everything everyone wanted. Like, that game's awesome. They're not even asking full price for it, you know? Indie dev is kind of where it's at now. Which is kind of another reason I didn't want to buy Hogwarts Legacy. Just because, like, I... Like, anything that the, the modern game dev could make... is something that a guy in his basement could make now. With less graphics, granted, but... Yeah, let's go ahead and slow them down over here. 
Uh, yeah, anything that a modern game dev could make is now something that a guy in his basement could also make with less graphics, to be sure, but like more heart and fine tuning will go into it sometimes. Though there is the confirm that like you hear about the good indie games because people are like, oh my god, good indie games, but like think about how many bad indie games come out. Like, all those crappy, like, cell phone games or, like, just the slurry of, like, games that just come out to be on Steam to try to sell something. I played this one game, actually, today that I was, like, I was going to rip it apart. I was even planning on making a video about it just because it was, like, so terrible. But I ended up deciding against it because I didn't think it was fair because it was actually a student project game. And, like, I think it's actually cool that, like, a student just was like, hey, I'll make a game for my game dev class or for my coding class or whatever. And then I'll just put it on Steam just to give it a convenient way to, you know, access it. And again, you know, Steam defeating piracy by being a, a convenience thing. Someone can just put his, his homework on Steam and it, it would be easier for your professor to read it that way. Like, that's hilarious. I think it was called like Conquest Napoleon or something like that. Man, this thing hasn't been getting any use. Nobody's been reaching it. Alright, I think we have to wait for that guy to expire in the acid. Nope, oh, there's one more dude over there. <laughs> Skeet shoot. Anyway, yeah, suffice it to say, I have been interested in, like, doing a more classically wizardly stuff, like, you know, wearing robes and, and using a, a wand instead of, like, some awesome Elden Ring staff or whatever. Because a lot of those games are really built for, like, melee combat. 